What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the different types of numbers. And the first set we're going to look at is the natural numbers. Now, drawing the symbol could be a little bit tricky, but it's the letter N, but we put two lines like this going through the diagonal, and then we complete our N like this. And these are the first kind of numbers that you'll deal with when you're very young. When you learn how to count, you're usually going to start at one, and then you're going to go counting with your fingers. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and you usually start by counting to 10. But the natural numbers continue we're going towards infinity. So the set of natural numbers is infinite, but it's the positive whole numbers. Now the next set of numbers we could look at is the whole numbers, which we indicate with W. And this set W for the whole numbers is gonna start at zero, and then it's gonna be all the positive whole numbers, all the natural numbers after zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, and then four, five, but I'm gonna stop counting because this is gonna go on to infinity. So the next set of numbers to look at are very important, the integers. And the way we draw the symbol for the integers, when we write in our Z, we're gonna put a double line for the diagonal like this. And the integers are all the whole numbers. We have zero, one, two, three, and we're gonna go on forever towards positive infinity. However, we also have the opposites of the natural numbers. So we're gonna have negative one, negative two, negative three, and we're gonna go on towards negative infinity in this direction here. So now the next set of numbers here is the rational numbers. And now it's gonna get a little bit trickier to list them. The symbol for the rational numbers is the Q, but we put a vertical line through like this. And examples of rational numbers here, so some examples would be something like one third, we could have a terminating decimal, so we have something like 5.7. We could have an infinite decimal that has a pattern to it, so something like, let's say it was repeating 1-3 like this, so 1-3, 1-3, 1-3, going on forever, but just know all of the integers are also considered to be rational numbers. So something like negative three, we could say zero, 12, so the list will go on and on and on. But now, what are rational numbers? Like, how do we condense this into just one idea? Is it's expressed, any number that could be expressed as the quotient of two integers. So I could say P over Q is rational. So we have P over Q, this fraction is rational if P and Q are integers. So P and Q are integers, but we have to specify that the denominator Q is not equal to zero. All right, this is very big. Now, some people might say here, like how could I express this one if this is an infinite decimal? So if we look at this one again, like this is 0 0.131313. If this is an infinite decimal, how could we write it as a fraction? But this one could be expressed as 13 over 99. Something like zero, I could just say zero divided by five. The whole numbers, I, or I'm sorry, the integer here, negative three, I could express as negative three divided by one. So that's how I know this is rational, even though it's not written in the form of a fraction right now. But just know in general, if you could write the number as one integer over another integer where the denominator is not zero, then your number is rational. So the final set of numbers I wanna look at is the real numbers, which is made up of rational plus irrational numbers. And the symbol for real numbers is the letter R with these two vertical lines here. But now, to really understand the real numbers, they are infinitely dense. They're made up of rational plus irrational numbers. Now we define rational numbers here, but irrational numbers, if we use this definition, cannot be expressed as the quotient of two integers. So some popular ones are Euler's number E, we have pi, and then we have the square root of non-perfect squares. So something like we have square root two, square root three, square root four wouldn't work because the square root of four is equal to two, so this would be a rational number, and this counts as one of our natural numbers, our whole numbers, our integers. But if I continue here, I could go to square root five, square root six, square root seven, and let's say I take a look at square root seven. The square root of seven is equal to 2.64, and then I'll just write out the rest of the digits here that will pop up on the screen on a calculator. So this will continue on forever, but notice here, there's no clear pattern. But for something before, like let's say 0 0.13 repeating, the pattern is obvious. It's just 131313 forever. So that's the main difference between a rational number and an irrational number, where a rational number can be infinite, the decimal can be infinite. However, with an irrational number, it goes on forever, but there's no clear pattern the way there is for rational numbers.